Hey guys, I am super excited because the day has come that I am going to finally get my kayak rigged out. I've got a brand new trolling motor for it. I've got some electronics, an Optima battery. You know, I had some information from Gene, some of the things that I need to look into to do. I'm sure you guys are going to give me some great comments on the mistakes I made or maybe some suggestions going down the road. And then we're going to take it to the lake, either tonight or first thing in the morning, depending on how long this takes and hopefully catch my first bass out of it, or hopefully a whole bunch. You guys stick around, let's see how it goes. All right, so the first thing that I, you know, I think one of the most important things is that I need to get a trolling motor put on this. You might have noticed in my social media, if you guys follow me on social media, that Cade put his trolling motor on his kayak already. Since then, I've got some more kayak Pacific trolling motors, a shorter shaft, one that Motor Guide makes. It's a little upgrade from what Cade put on his uh, kayak. So we're gonna change his trolling motor out. I'm gonna put my trolling motor on for the first time right here. We'll see, it's gonna be interesting. We'll mount it right here and figure out the wiring and uh, all that stuff. So let's get this thing unboxed. So we just finally got these in the mail. Uh, man, I'm excited to get them. It's been a long time coming. All right. We have got us a trolling motor. These things are hard to get. You know, so basically I've got to get this mounted on the bow and then this piece mounts to the trolling motor to where I can take the trolling motor on off really simple for going down the road or storing it. Uh, yeah, that's what I got to do. I got to get this, this piece put here, this put on the trolling motor. I like how short this is, you know, that's, that's really cool. That other trolling motor we had had a lot longer shaft, so this is really short and it's got a big, easy latch. So let's get it on there. Let's get it in the water. We got, we got some work to do here. One thing that I noticed that we got to make sure on is when we mount this plate, we need to make sure that the trolling motor will deploy. So uh, what I mean by that is, you know, this trolling motor is going to sit right here. If we were to release this, let it come down, we need to make sure that it has the right amount of distance to be able to lock all the way down right there, you know, to where it doesn't hit up here up front. So that's kind of where we need to mount everything. So I can move that out to that hole. That all lines up with those holes. And then I can move it back to right there. So I can see that this front edge right here, I've got that front edge even right there and I've got plenty of clearance now, so it doesn't need to be any further out. I think I'm gonna mount it right there. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Mount it right there, I've got plenty of clearance for that to come down. It's gonna be way up on my kayak to uh, give it lots of support. So let's put that back up there like so. I'm gonna set this out of the way. And we will mount this right here. Okay. I am going to uh, we'll put that there because that's going to keep this centered because I know that's the right spot. So I'm using a 1564 size drill bit. That's what you need for these holes right here. That's perfect. It'll fit. You know, you can just fit everything through there. All right. Now we can take these out and I'm going to use lots of washers. I'm going to put these washers right there like that on these. Now I need to put washers on the bottom and I'm going to use bigger washers. Like I, this pack here has got little bitty washers. I want as big a grip that I can get on that bottom. So uh, I need to take this front plate out right here. This out. Okay. So I just got some bigger fender washers, got some couple different sizes because you've got these screws that come down and there's molding around those. So I might not be able to use those big ones. I'm going to have to use these smaller ones and uh, it's got a locking, it's got a locking nylon nut. So I don't need a, a lock washer. Get those started. I think it's important to get them all snug. I wouldn't get one tight and the other three be loose. I just want to make sure I pull this down evenly that, uh, you know, I don't have it warped, you know, and you could do that if you, if you tighten one of them uh, all the way tight before you tighten the other. So I always like to get them all snug and then go back through and put your final tightening. 
The socket you need is a, is a 10 millimeter socket or wrench for the bottom. Okay, we got that tight. Next step, let's just set that on there. That's gonna go like that, okay? The next step is to mount this to the bottom of the trolling motor. So we will turn, okay. So that goes like that. Important to make that the right direction. So you've got, that's gonna sit like so. Make sure that's right. Because it won't fit that way. It can only go one way. So the shiny side goes up or out. The dull side, if there is such a thing, or just the side with the, you can see those little rings, you know, that's, that's where the screws are gonna recess. And uh, I'm going all the way in the furthest screw down. Be sure you got your washers. These all go down. And put the outside four ones in. We got something special to do with that middle one we don't want to forget about. And I'm adding washers to mine. I, I just, I feel like I want lots of washers. So I don't think there's enough washers to do all that. So I'm gonna add washers everywhere that I can just to have more power to, that it pulls against. Before you put those middle screws in, don't forget to put this in right here. This is what is gonna hold your quick release. So now I've got that in. I'm gonna put my bolt down through there. And now I can put the other side on. Again, I'm putting a washer. Since I don't have a 10 millimeter wrench, I am using <laughs> crescent wrench. I cannot find my 10 millimeter wrench. I think it's out at the pecan farm. That's where all my stuff ends up. Again, I'm gonna get these all snug just to get it centered. And then I'll come back and put the final tighten on them. Super important disclaimer right here. On this one right here that does not have this, do not over tighten it. It will pull through because there's nothing in there to, to, to space it. You know, if you wanted to make it super tight, you could probably put some washers or some sort of spacer, but don't over tighten that one right there. It will bust this uh, plastic right here. So just get this one snug. I learned that the hard way. Like, that is plenty tight for that one. Okay, now set it down on there. Okay, perfect. Okay, now this is our uh, quick release. It, it'll slide right in here and then snap in that spot there to keep that latched. Now I've got to put the, the side plates back on. These two little grooves, they slide in right here. Kind of pull that up and it snaps into place. And one screw holds it right there. Okay, now I need to do the other side. Again, you got these two little tabs. They slide in right there. Okay, so I'm mounting this plate back on here. We're just gonna plug into this troll motor plug. I gotta cut this wire next. So we will get it wired up. All right, so now, that would go right there. Good to go. So I'm gonna unplug that just till I get the battery hooked up. So now we have got the trolling motor on. Let's put the prop on. It's always good to have the prop on. Okay, so we've got 9 16 I wouldn't over tighten this, just get it snug. You can pull some seals out or something. There we go, just, just snug. That's all you need. Troll motor's on. All right, moving on. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my battery in here and we're gonna see if that troll motor works. I've got me an Optima Group 27. We'll set that right there. This is the plug that comes with the kayak. You'll notice it's got a breaker in it. That's very important to have that breaker. So uh, I'm gonna hook this up to the battery first. Obviously red to positive. Now I think it's also gonna be important guys to cover these up. Tighten it, be sure you don't get over here, get a wrench that's too long and, and arc those. I did that one time. It lit up my uh, tungsten ring. That's why I no longer have a tungsten wedding ring, but I would cover these up. I'm gonna get some covers and we will put some covers on that. So, all right, the moment of truth. Oh, I guess that'd help if I plug it in. Ha ah, we got power. That's cool. 
huh, shows, see right here we got power. You got a light right here. That is awesome. So now if I hit this button, does it go? Connect motor to battery, after motor beats, press and hold. Oh, it looks like we need to uh, connect this to the trolling motor. All right, did you guys hear that? I've got my remote connected. I had to get out the uh, operator's manual because when I tried it, it had been more than 10 seconds. So I just unplugged it, plugged it back in, and you hold the left and the right arrow, you hold it down, it'll beep a couple times, then it'll beep, 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 and now it should work. We got it working. Check it out. I can steer it. How cool is that? I got me a fan. Ah, feels awesome. I love it. Speed it up. <laughs> it works. Okay, so what's really cool about this trolling motor, you know, you might have noticed that I put that other trolling motor on Cades. This one has built-in GPS. It has an anchor mode already in it, uh, you know, which I think is going to be super cool. I don't want to be paddling around. I, I don't have a power pole yet for it. I want to get one, but I can just put this thing in anchor mode and it's going to, you know, pinpoint me right on that fishing spot. So super, super cool. All right, now let me figure if I can turn it off. Simple. Okay, really a neat remote. This is your on off. From what I've gathered really quick, this is steering left and right. This is your speed up and down. After reading this a little further, we have to have a fixed GPS position to complete the mounting angle calibration. So that's gonna be important to do. Once we get it outside, I'm gonna take this book with me and I am going to do my angle calibration once I get a good signal outside. I'm not gonna get a signal here in the shop, but we got the trolling motor working. We can go to the water. I've got a remote. Man, that'd be horrible to lose that. I need to put that lanyard on it and I am gonna mount it to my seat. That way I don't ever lose it. So I'm gonna put this, I think, around my seat. Cause that way I just, I just don't wanna lose it. And then I'll put it up underneath in the drawer. Perfect, okay. All right, the next thing I wanna do guys, I wanna install a depth finder on here. I just, I gotta have a depth finder somehow, some way. And uh, I'm gonna just mount a bracket for an HDS9. That way I can just take a depth finder off my boat put it over here on my kayak, vice versa, go back and forth. So let's get a uh, bracket out. Let's get some transducers, some power cords. We'll fumble through this together, get us a depth finder mounted. So I improvised a little bit here. Um, I wanted, I, this is not gonna be my final depth finder I want in here. This is a little hook reveal, five inch screen. I wanna put, I wanna make it, this is the one that came with the, the kayak. I'm gonna end up figuring out a way to just switch my nine HDS off my Z21 over here to this boat. So I just took a piece of, uh, I don't know, plastic board, a piece of wood would work. And I had this piece here, came with the kayak. I'm just trying to improvise a way. So tomorrow when I go, I will have a place to mount it. And uh, that's why I'm doing it that way. So that, I mounted this little board here. Then I can mount that plate right there. And then I'll put my depth finder on top like that and be able to put it right here. So this is kind of a temporary deal just to get me by. Uh, through tomorrow until I get the rest of the parts that I need to get my whole HDS9 in. I don't have all the, everything I need yet for it. So we're gonna make this work right here by putting it in there. So I just put me four screws to mount that. Now I'm gonna mount this right here. I guess I can use that to hold it. That'll work. Okay, that should mount there. Perfect, I'll be able to see that. We'll tighten that down a little bit. I like it, that'll work. This transducer that we're gonna mount, you know, to this bracket, there's a little piece here that an insert that goes in there first. You wanna be sure your wire goes up. See how I just laid that wire up? Then you insert it right here, cause this is gonna mount under your kayak like this. So I've got that like that. Then you've got your washer and a rubber washer. They go through that hole. Then you do the same thing on this side. The rubber goes, uh, you know, between the two metal, you know, the metal bracket and the metal washer. Then that's two seven sixteenths inch wrenches. You want to tighten this down, but you don't want it too tight. You want to be able to adjust the angle of your transducer. So that's that's why there's those rubber washers in there. Uh, it just keeps you from getting it too tight. So I'm just going to get it snug. 
so I can still adjust that. See how that'll adjust? Now, I'm gonna screw this to that plate that's underneath my kayak. All right, so I got this last screw to get out. Now, I'm gonna run this transducer down underneath the boat, then I'm gonna bring it out. And again, since this is temporary, I'm gonna do something different. I'm just gonna bring it out this lid and run it over here to where I've got it mounted. Got me a little uh, Harbor Freight sneaky snake, I think is what these things are, but we'll run that up there. If you don't have this, you know, I think these are rotor rooters or I don't know what they are, just use a coat hanger or something. I use it a lot rigging the big boat. Something like I want you guys to come up with. I want to name my boat. You know, Cade, he named his Dauntless. I want a name for mine. I just, I don't know, I think it'd be cool. And I want it to kind of play on the whole Z21 XL series. I don't know, like a mini, a mini me Z21, you know, or a mini, mini XL or something, you know, it's going to be like my, my, my boat away from my boat, you know, my, uh, my little Z21 is kind of what I was thinking. So it'd be interesting if you guys help me come up with a name for this. All right, I have got it run all the way back here. Now I am just gonna coil this up because I don't need that much of it. So that would be more than enough to get out there to my depth finder. Okay, that'll shut like that. I am going to uh, do the same thing with my power. I am temporarily gonna run my power cord and I'm gonna bring it out this rod holder, I think. All right, guys, man, I'm, I'm getting really close. I've got the battery in, I've got everything hooked up. I'm gonna hook my uh, 1200 digital Optima charger up to my battery. I got my basket in. I need to put some lures in here. I got my life jacket. Put me a rod holder on here. So I got one, two, three, four, five. I can hold five rods. I can make it happen tomorrow. I'll catch my first fish out of this with five rods. So I am super excited. I'm gonna go to a football game tonight. First thing in the morning, we're getting this one wet. You guys got to come up with a name for it. Cade named his the Dauntless. I want mine to be something related to Nitro, Mini Nitro, Mini XL Z21. You guys helped me come up with a name, so I can't wait. First thing in the morning, I'm getting it wet, and I hope my first bass is a great big one. It's been fun putting it together. I learned a lot. There's still some more modifications I'm going to make on it. You know, we're going to upgrade the electronics on it. Uh, I'd eventually like to get a power pole on it, figure out some ways to, to mount some GoPros to it, but I've got it good enough to go catch me a bass. Let's go.